Hello, I'm Jim Van Burek. I'm with the Manitoba Geological Survey. I am presently uh, within a uh, gravel pit uh, that is located about a mile south of the community of Seymourville. This gravel pit uh, shows continuity uh, with the Winnipeg Formation at the base of the actual quarry. At the upper part of the quarry, there's glacial till. You can see below the trees and vegetation uh, off to my uh, left that uh, the are typical large glacial erratics uh, mixed in with the finer glacial clays, indicating uh, the glaciers did pass over this area. And uh, they uh, managed to leave uh, the Winnipeg uh, uh, essentially a sandstone, but uh, uh, it is also uh, uh, with a, a bit of clay, uh, as you can tell by the darker uh, bluish green area up at the top there. There is some uh, Winnipeg Formation uh, clay uh, present at this particular site. So if I dig down into it, it may even have some iron-rich components into it, but uh, this bluish uh, uh, green clay at the top uh, was uh, preserved even after the glaciers passed over the top. So all I can really feel here that has happened is that uh, maybe the ground was so totally frozen that it behaved like a, a separate chunk of ice and the glaciers then could slide right over the top of this frozen portion. And uh, it, it would have retained quite a bit of water uh, in here and it's still, even in the bright sun, uh, this is damp uh, clay. So uh, it definitely uh, would act as an aquitard uh, to preserve the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, sand below. And so maybe uh, that's how this uh, survived, was partially due to this clay-rich uh, material at the top of the Winnipeg. If we move slightly lower down this outcrop and dig into it, similar to other places uh, about a mile to the north of here, sand behaves almost like rock to some extent, but when you dig into it, it tends to crumble and fall apart. Now, let's see, this still may be the clay rich zone near the top. And, uh, oh, okay, this was a nodule. Uh, it's totally surrounded by uh, a different kind of clay and there appears to be unconsolidated sand on the inside. What I can do is put some acid on this and just see if by chance it fizzes, it shouldn't, but, uh, Sometimes you get surprised when you go through this test. So let's see what happens when we put some acid on there. Nope, there's absolutely no fizz. It is totally dead. It's definitely not cemented by calcium carbonate. Let's move a little bit further down and see if we can get out of the clay material and into a sand. Again, it's behaving like a more solid material. There's a lot of iron rich uh, material in here. It might be a silty clay. Definitely silty. You find out by putting it on your teeth. <laughs> Let's see over here. This may be more sandy. Yes, this is your more typical sand. So now we're into a sand that is about 550 million years in age and uh, there should be no cobbles, no boulders like there might be on the top. It should be all fairly close and grain size. It can be iron stained. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of iron on top of it. And there's probably kaolin around each little sand grain uh, that is in here. Uh, again, it should crumble completely. There should be absolutely no uh, chunks or pieces in here. Everything should be just totally fine little sand grains, individually packed. Uh, again, iron stained, but that's no big to do. And so you have the individual grains of sand, uh, the, the stuff that you would find in an hourglass that would uh, mark time. And the grains are again, individual pieces. And 
shouldn't uh, react at all with any acid. So where's my acid bottle? Go down here again and nothing happens. No fizzing of anything.